a current of 15 amps flows north along a wire. So let's draw a picture. So let's say if we have a wire or even a conductor and a current is flowing in this direction. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at a point 10 centimeters east of the wire. So east is this direction. So 10 centimeters away from it, we wish to calculate the magnetic field at that point. Now, whenever you have a straight wire, to determine the direction of the magnetic field around that wire, here's what you can do. What you need to do is take a pen and take your right hand and curl your fingers around the wire and make sure that the current is in the direction as your thumb. So let's say if we have a current going in this direction and if you curl your fingers around that wire with your thumb pointing to the right, your fingers should flow in this general direction. So above the pen, notice that the magnetic field is coming out of the page, represented by that symbol. Below the pen, or below the wire, it's going into the page. Now let's use that same technique for this wire. So take your right hand, curl your fingers around the pen, and make sure your thumb is pointing up in the direction of the current. So on the left side, the magnetic field should be coming out of the page. And then on the right side, it should be going into the page, if you do it correctly. So we're going to have an X on the right and a dot on the left. This is out of the page, and X represents in the page. So at some point A, 10 centimeters to the right of the wire, we now know the direction of the magnetic field is going into the page. So all we need to do is calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field. Now, those of you who are having trouble with that right-hand rule, you can see it this way. So you want to point your thumb in the direction of the current, and then make sure your fingers curl around the wire. My drawing's not perfect, but hopefully you can see at this point. So here's the direction of the current, and notice that your fingers behind the wire curl in this direction. And so it's out of the page on the left, into the page on the right. So hopefully you can see that visual illustration. Now let's calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field. And the formula that we need is this equation. It's equal to mu zero times the current divided by two pi r. And so the formula is pretty simple. And so this is equal to four pi times 10 to negative seven. And i represents the current, it's 15 amps. And R is basically the distance between the wire and a point of interest. So R is 10 centimeters, which is 0.1 meters. So let's go ahead and get the answer. So you should get 3 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. And so that's it. So as you move away from the wire, the strength of the magnetic field greatly decreases. As R increases, the magnetic field decreases. Now if you wish to increase the strength of the magnetic field, you can move closer to the wire or you can increase the current. Increasing the current increases the strength of the magnetic field proportionally. So if you double the current, the magnetic field will double in value. If you triple the current, the magnetic field will triple. If you double the distance, the magnetic field will be reduced to one half of its original value. If you triple the distance, it's going to be one third of its value. If you decrease the distance by a factor of two, if you basically cut it in half, the magnetic field will increase by a factor of two. So this is the formula to calculate the magnetic field due to a long straight wire. Now let's move on to the next problem. A current of 20 amps flows east along a wire. Another current of 30 amps flows west 5 centimeters beneath the first wire.
calculate the magnetic field at a position of 2 centimeters above and below the first wire. So let's say that this is the first wire. And this is going to be the second wire. So in the first wire, we have a current of 20 amps flowing east. And let's call this I1. Now in the second wire, we have a current of 30 amps, which is flowing west. And so let's call this I2. Now what we need to do is calculate the magnetic field 2 centimeters above the first wire. So let's calculate it here, and let's call that point A. So that's at a position 2 centimeters above the first wire, and the second wire is 5 centimeters beneath the first wire. So feel free to pause the video and calculate the magnetic field at that position. Now first, we need to determine the direction of the magnetic field. So if you use the right-hand rule, and for the first wire, if you curl your fingers around the wire with your thumb pointing to the right, the magnetic field should be going in this direction like this. So what that means is that above the wire, it's coming out of the page, and below the wire, it's going into the page. And we're going to call this B1. That's the magnetic field created due to current 1. Now, wire 2, the current that flows in it, also creates a magnetic field. Anytime a charge is moving, it creates its own magnetic field. Now, because the other wire is going in the opposite direction, if you curl your hands around the wire and with your thumb faced to the left this time, the current should be going in the, I mean, the magnetic field rather should be going in the opposite direction. Let me use a different color. So it should look something like this. And so notice that it's going into the page at the top. And it's coming out of the page at the bottom. So this is B2. So notice that at position A at this point, B1 is going into the page, but B2, anywhere above wire 2, including this position, B2 is going uh, into the page. B1's coming out of the page. So this is out of the page, and this is into the page, in case if I somehow mix those terms. So now that we know B1 is going out of the page and B2 is into the page, we can now calculate the net magnetic field at point A. So notice that these two have opposite signs. So if it's coming out of the page, that means B1 is positive. If it's going into the page, like B2, that's negative. That's in a negative Z direction. B1 is in a positive uh, Z direction. So at point A, the net magnetic field is the sum of B1 and B2. So B1 is positive because it's coming out of the page, and B2 is negative because it's going into the page. So this is going to be B1 minus B2. B1 is equal to mu0, that's the permeability of free space, times I1 divided by 2 pi R1. B2 is going to be mu0 I2 over 2 pi R2. So now we could factor out mu0 and also 2 pi. And so we're going to be left with I1 over R1 minus I2 over R2. And so this is going to give us the net magnetic field generated by both wires. So mu0 is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. And then we can divide that by 2 pi. The first current is 20 amps. And R1, the distance between current 1 and point A, that's 2 centimeters. But if we divide that by 100, that's going to be 0 0.02 meters. I2 is 30 amps. And R2, that's the distance between point A and current 2. So that's going to be 5 centimeters plus 2 centimeters, or 7 centimeters. 
which is 0 0.07 meters. Now 4 pi divided by 2 pi is simply 2. So this becomes 2 times 10 to the minus 7. And then we have 20 divided by 0 0.02. So that's 1,000. And minus 30 divided by 0 0.07, which is 428.571. So now, let's subtract 1,000 by that number and then multiply that result by 2 times 10 to the minus 7. So as your answer, you should get this. The net magnetic field is 1.14 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. So that's the net magnetic field of both wires at point A. Now let's move on to the second part. So we need to calculate the net magnetic field 2 centimeters below the first wire. So that's going to be somewhere over here. Let's call this point B. Now notice that B1 and B2, they're both going into the page at point B. So they're both negative, which means the net magnetic field has to be negative. So I'm going to put a negative sign on both of them. So we're adding two negative terms, negative B1 plus negative B2, or simply negative B1 minus B2. So that's going to be negative mu0 I1 over 2 pi R1 minus mu0 I2 over 2 pi R2. So just like before, we're going to take out negative mu0 over 2 pi. And so we're going to be left with uh, I1 over R1 minus I2 divided by R2. So mu0, that's negative 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 2 pi. And then I1 is 20. Now R1, the distance between the first wire and point B, it's 2 centimeters below it. So R1 is going to be 2 again, or 0 0.02 meters. Now, the only thing that's different, really, is uh, R2, because point B is 3 centimeters above the second wire. It's 5 minus 2, and that's how we get 3. Now, there's one mistake I need to correct. I factored out negative mu0 over 2 pi, so this is now positive, which makes this positive. So... Let's just make that correction. Negative 4 pi divided by 2 pi is negative 2. So this is negative 2 times 10 to the minus 7. And then 20 divided by 0 0.02, that's 1,000. And then 30 divided by 0 0.03, uh, that's 1,000 as well. So 1,000 plus 1,000 is 2,000. And if you take 2,000, multiply by negative 2 times 10 to negative 7. That's equal to negative 4 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. So that's the net magnetic field. The negative sign tells us that the net magnetic field is going in a negative z direction or into the page. And that's it. So now you know how to calculate the magnetic field due to a long straight wire or if you have two long straight wires. So you just got to determine the direction of the magnetic field and if you need to add or subtract them. And just remember, if it's going out of the page, it's positive. It's going in the positive z direction. If it's going into the page, it's negative since it's going in a negative z direction.